A lot of single people desire marriage, but the issue is the how. All right, so I've been walking. I walked all through the night. I just got home, had my bath, and changed, got in the car, and came here. When I leave this place, I'm going to meet my colleagues where we are walking, we are still walking. I tell people, a, a lot of people who get married are old enough to be married, but do not know the how of marriage. So age can mislead you into marriage. Hormones can mislead you into marriage. Physical development can mislead you into marriage. The people seated before me can father or be mothers to children. Physically developed. Money can even mislead people to marriage. For context, if you have scripture in this place, if you don't have, just take note of it. If you read Matthew chapter 19 from verse 8, Matthew 19, if you have it in the message translation, it helps me drive home the point for you. Matthew chapter 19, verse 8, message translation, if you have it. But Jesus said something in some way about verse 10. He said to his apostles, while teaching them, he said, the marriage is not for everyone because it requires a certain attitude and grace. So the how is the skill. I tell people all the time that marriage is both an act and an art. There's an act of marriage. There's also an, the art of marriage, A-R-T. A lot of people commit the act of marriage. They walk down the aisle, they get married, but do not understand the art, A-R-T, of marriage. So when you talk about the how, is knowing the, is having the capacity, all right, to do it. The capacity. So you can be old enough, but lack the capacity. You can have money, but lack the capacity. So Jesus said in Matthew 19, it requires a certain aptitude and grace. Aptitude, like aptitude test. To see your capacity to handle that's the how. There is a how to it. There's a how to make a wife happy. There's a how to keep a husband. There's a how to parent. And guess what? The how is not missing. The how is not lacking. People just don't take solutions that are available. It's just like people who don't like to bath in hot Nigerian weather. It's just like people who come back from work all sweaty and claim they are too tired to have their bath that person lacks the how of a good life that person is essentially dead and does not know how to be clean there's a how there's a how you cook a good meal is a function of the how that's what a good meal is so when you talk about the how you have more people desiring a marriage they don't understand how to run. So I ask people, somebody's 25, they say they are young. Somebody's 27, they say they are young. Somebody's 23, they say they are young. Time is running out on you. The King David you read about was anointed at 17. All of the exploits you read about, Saul chased him down until he was 30. He didn't ascend the throne until he was 30. But we make the mistake of thinking, you know, I'm so young. One of the biggest mistakes that happen to single people is that they only try to prepare for marriage when they have somebody in their life. But the point to begin to prepare for marriage is the first time you ever thought about marriage. Preparation begins. Why? Relationship is deceptive. The moment you get into a relationship, time begins to run against you. That's when you realize that your church, you need to give you the nine months announcement. Then you need to do a three month counseling. Then you need to spend one whole year visiting. You are from Akure, so you guys have to travel to Akure and see somebody. Then you need to see one weekend uncle in Portaco. Then the other terrible auntie in Kaduna. You realize that you are spending your time preparing a wedding 
that you do not know the how of the marriage. Some of you are facing the freest time of your life now and you are not catching the how. You are catching cruise. See what I'm saying? Life is so busy. I'm a practicing lawyer and a full-time minister. We left for South Africa last Wednesday. Got in South Africa on Thursday. Did our program on Saturday. Left on Sunday night. Got into this country on Monday afternoon. By Monday evening, I, I joined my colleagues for the work we're doing. Between Monday and today, I've spent more time on law papers in a law office than in my house. My children are complaining. It's like you're not back from your trip. I only took the clothes I wore yesterday morning, one hour ago. We walked all night. We're still not done. I'm going back there. This is the freest some of you will be. This is about the time some of you can cancel 10 books in a year on how to do marriage. This is about the time some of you can pick up life. All right? I don't know how long it's going to take me today before we are done. Because we need to be done today. I'm teaching somewhere else tomorrow evening. Some of us are so free, we don't know what to do with freedom. How? So you see people walk down the aisle, putting on the ring and the wedding gown, but empty as to the how. You see, we are still on the first word of seven words. How do we get to purpose? How do we get there when we have not dealt with the how? So blank. That's why a boy told you you are confused. Excitement just takes over your brain. <laughs> you start laughing laugh like somebody that is drunk. Or you see a woman. Men that beat women today once admired those women, but they didn't know the how to keep the excitement. They say how to keep the excitement. So I was arguing with some of my colleagues last night as we were walking through the night. We took turns to just laugh and just relax. And some of them were speaking about marriage. One was talking about exes. And one was talking about how love is a scam. I said, I've known the same woman for 20 years. I met her in 2003. She's in my house. Married for 12 of those. December to be 13. I said, there's a how. And when, you know, I had to call my wife and it was a speaker. And they all went, oh. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. They say, how? There is a how. Your life is as hard as your lack of knowing the how. You are as broke as your lack of knowing the how of money. You are as stressed as your lack of knowing the how of rest. The number of your exes is a revelation of your lacking the how of relationship. It is well known. I know it's getting serious. I no longer need to beg people to keep quiet. Because don't they enter? As I say the ex, now someone just remember two exes out of seven. It is well. Do you get what I mean? There's a how. So the how is acquiring the know-how. I know it's not good to use definitions, use the same word indefinite. Acquiring the know-how. For instance, if you have a Honda, you don't take a Honda to where the fitness is spent because they don't understand the intricacies of it. So the how is coming to the understanding of the intricacies of it. Do you know why a lot of married men easily get girls to follow them? Because they have spent time understanding the how of a woman's oppression. So you see a young boy, my future is bright, my future is bright. It's not a bright future we're talking. Do you know how? You know some boys don't even know how to toast a lady. Like I tell people, you don't woo a lady, you have not wowed. So you start with the wowing before you woo. I, I, I like you. I want to marry you. You think your words can't do it, your action should do it. You came for a conference like this, you are smelling. How? How? If you are not the most desired guy in the community of ladies, your case is already bad. Let the ladies be hoping it's you that will greet them. There are guys that will ask out a lady. The lady likes him. But she knows that in the community of ladies, the guy's reputation is poor. She doesn't know what to tell her friends if she accepts this one. How? How? Some ladies need to know how. You are too accessible, too available. Everybody, everybody, everybody comes in and out of your life. The brothers have discussed. That one is too true. How? They say how? People get into a relationship. Before I know it, we don't even know what to do with ourselves again. How? So word number one is what? The word how. Ask your neighbor, are you acquiring 
the relevant knowledge on how to do what you want to do. Ask them again, neighbor, are you sure your foolishness will not end your dream? Say one more time, neighbor, do you have enough sense for your future? Say again, neighbor, touch your head, neighbor, touch your head. Put something inside, put something inside. Put something inside. Put something inside. Don't let it go empty. Now sing for that neighbor. Must you go an empty head? Must you go? Must you go? Must you go? And must you go? Must you go? Must you go? Must you go? Uh, point number two, prepare, prepare, preparation is an active process, nobody shows up prepared, I spent five years reading for a law degree, not everybody graduated. I spent another year in the law school. I left and I did masters in the UK. I left to the US and I did some certification in public private partnerships. So when I sit before a client, you know, some clients are so funny in this part of the world. They don't understand the meaning of consultation. Because you pay me for talking to me and I bill per minute or hour, depending. Why? Preparation has made me worth it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So some people, you know, it's just phone call. Don't call me. If I give you legal advice on phone, I'll count the minutes and send you bill. Prepare. What brought me to that point of profit is preparation. You can't profit without preparation. You can't profit. In the context of our discussion, what's the profit? The profit is the result of desire. That's why the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. People are desiring what they won't get and are falling sick for it. Emotional sickness to start with heartbreak because they are not prepared. Let me say this to you. Everything you desire has a curriculum of preparation. So it started with the desire to be a lawyer. Oh, and that desire had a lot to do with, you know, how lawyers charge, how they speak, how they earn. And you know what was required of me? I needed to go to school to prepare for the dream. People want to get to fulfilled purpose in marriage and they don't prepare. Write this down if you're right. Every dream has a curriculum. Every curriculum has topics. Every dream has a curriculum. Every curriculum has topics. So let me use a lady for example here. If you're a lady and you are dreaming of your future home, let me tell you topics that are in it. You have the topic is a major topic called wife. Then there's a breakdown of the office of the wife. These are subtopics. There is wife, the partner. There is wife, the helper. There is wife, the submissive follower. There is wife, the comfort, the comforter. It's not good that man be alone. It's just like saying to a man who's in the future. There's a topic called husband. Under that topic, there's leadership. Under that topic, there's covering. Under the topic, I mean, you leave that major topic, you go to another topic, fatherhood. You leave that topic, you go to minor topics on the fatherhood, the office of the father to sons and the father to daughters. The curriculum is so long. So you have a lot of people fantasizing what they're not prepared for. So we have three children, two are properly preteen, 12, 10, 
we have our last child who is eight. And the more you just go on, the more you see that your parenting styles need to keep changing. They are no longer children. They are no longer those ones who say, sit, move, go and poo, go and that. Everything has changed. They're now having conversations. They're now having discussions. They're now trying to engage. Preparation is what makes you set for the different faces and demands of your singular destiny. To stand in here as a father, is a husband, is a leader, is a boss, an employer of labor. That means I have staff. I mean, the offices are many. How do I get there? When I begin to dream, I must ask myself, what is the curriculum of my dream? Because until I understand the curriculum, I'm not going to prepare. And when you don't prepare, you don't pass. Essentially, life brings us through circles where we either pass or fail. That's what's going on. Every negative experience is a failure predicated on lack of preparation. Every negative experience is a failure predicated on lack of preparation. So what should be my I am single. How do we even get into relationships? I tell people, just in case it looks like advertising my books, I don't believe a single person, for instance, should walk the earth without reading people like Gary Chapman, things I wish I knew before I was married. Then how? The five love languages? How? Love and respect by uh, uh, this author, Enrich? How? The late Bimbo Odukoya wrote a book on choosing a life partner? How? Is it Pastor King Cleo Congo? How? You're spending data on Facebook, you can't sit down five minutes, ten minutes on YouTube and watch a wholesome message that shifts something in your brain. Some things we are running with in our marriage today, we picked up as students who were dating. I would never forget, I give a practical example. Reverend Joshua came into our school, Reverend Joshua Tende came into our school and thought about family finance. Julia and I were dating, we were so convinced, we went to the bank the next day and opened a joint account. How they answered us without being married, I don't know. The account is still in existence in one of the banks. So into marriage, we already knew some things. We opened the one as a couple. And the uses for it were known. We we're not asking silly questions like, Chief Campus had joint account. What will they do with it? We sat somewhere, learned a lesson, picked the lesson, and began to learn. I can show you and tell you a couple of things in our home that are structured on a lesson learned from a book, from a teaching, somewhere there's a preparation that comes. So some people looked at me, you married so early, blah, blah, blah. How did you get the wisdom to preparation? Because it doesn't fall on you. My parents were separated, I was eight, they divorced, I was ten. I've had four mothers. So it's not that I came out of a family that showed me how to do it. My disadvantage had to be turned to advantage because I understood that preparation is what I must gift my destiny. Preparation. I just say that to tell somebody here who may be having excuses. You don't know my background, and so what? You're not the first, you're not the last. If you make it, you'll not be the first. If you fail, oh, you're just another failure in a bunch of plenty failures. Nothing special. When you get to heaven, they're not going to pity you and say, ah, sorry, you really suffered. They will flog you some more. Do you have sense? Somebody came to your church and preached. You just walked away. You're just his friends and punching phone. I don't know. Call, give him 30 strokes. Room of his boxers are flogging very, very thin show. And they're finished flogging. They'll give you an angel to treat you for two weeks. <laughs> Praise God, dude. Prepare. Preparation is an active thing. Ask your mother or if you have ever cooked. How do you cook good rice, for instance? You just, mm, I'm so tired today. You just put the rice in the pot, put the maggi, put the pepper, put the gas on yourself and come. Preparation has a recipe. Let me ask you a question. A very honest question. The way you treat the books you should read, the messages you should hear, if life treats your relational life that way, how will you turn out? How? Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Guard your heart with all diligence. 
but it determines the course of your life. Your level of preparation is determinable by the level of stuff you take into your heart because it determines the course of your life. All right? Number three word is yourself. We live in a world where people focus on others. The, the, the most humoristic behavior I know of. People focus on other people. People don't focus on themselves. People don't try to improve themselves. Even if I'm speaking now, some of you are saying, tell them, I know, this thing you are saying applies to Joel, my friend. The Bible says you should take the big log of wood in your eyes out before you speak to your neighbor. If every time the word of God comes, you deflect it to somebody else, you are not very wise. Why? It may not be palatable, but it's good. But the word of God is for correction, rebuke, instruction in righteousness. Why? So that we'll be fully formed. That's why some people are afraid to read the Bible. But the Bible will flog them. I'll give you an example. Husbands in the 21st century have a way of preaching submission more than love. Whereas the letter on submission was not written to them. Nobody wrote it to them. Wives have a way of telling husbands to love as Christ loves the church. That letter was not written to them. It's not your business. Read your own letter, Mbanu. If you read the letter that is written to somebody else. Yourself. You can't get to the dream. See, the only thing you can control is you. I can't control your choices. You know why people pick stupid spouses? Because they have not worked on themselves for their eyes to know what is right. Oh, Paul says to us, henceforth know we know man after the flesh. If you don't walk on your eyes, you are going to keep knowing people after the flesh. The more you keep knowing people after the flesh, the more you keep making fleshy decisions. And the more you make fleshy decisions, the more you get fleshy consequences. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's so important to focus on yourself. Say neighbor. Ah, I can't hear you. Say neighbor. One more time, neighbor. Leave that neighbor. That neighbor is not serious. Talk to the other neighbor. Neighbor. Talk to the one behind you. Neighbor. Okay, right, let's, let's do this. Say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Open your ears and hear. Focus on yourself. Oh. Don't be a mumu. Focusing on others. Focus on yourself. Now talk to the other neighbor. Say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I hope you can. Me. Focus on yourself. One more neighbor. Say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I think you have some sense. Oh, use it and focus on yourself. Call out your own weakness. Honest about it. Try to baba for it. Pick a book that helps you grow. For example, mouth they talk too much. Oh. Go and read just me. I go tell you the title Me and my big man If anger they worry you I will not tell you that one Focus on yourself Focus on Say I Call your name Decide today that me, 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 I am a project. 
I will work on myself. I stop hiding and pretending like I am perfect. I will work on me. And the Holy Ghost will work on me. I will allow him. I will allow the word of God to chuck me where they pain me. In Jesus' name. I say, say in Jesus' name, say amen. Now say your amen. amen. Number, number what now? Let me see who is following me. We have done three. What's number four? What's the number four word? Wait, wait, wait. What's number four word? What's number four word? Somebody say four. Somebody say four. The Bible says that Jesus endured the cross. Why? Because there was a joy set before him. If you don't understand the word for, you may not understand the depth of sacrifice you need to make. I'll give you an example. For why did we begin to drive the direction we drove to get here? Because there was a reason. And the reason was to get here. If I was driving fast right now, from about one hour ago, very, very fast, 150 kilometers per hour, and heading to Guagualada, you would be waiting for me, and I will not be coming this direction. Speed has been misplaced. Every time you want to get discouraged when you pick another book, and sleep is telling you, <laughs> my brother, <laughs> don't touch that book. <laughs> for I am here for you. <laughs> don't to sleep and say, I am reading this book for something. I am reading this book for something. No. <laughs> when your phone begins to tempt you, you know, some of you, and the time you spend with Facebook, if you spend it with the Lord, You'll be so powerful, it's much harder you'll be doing ministry. You just gotta be working dead body. But Facebook is not allowing you to be great. Facebook. When you know the four, why am I doing what I'm doing? Sometimes you are taking a fast, and food is calling your name. Richoli. Churcho. Come on, baby. You know, it's when you choose to fast that all the aroma in your neighborhood. The people that are frying egg, frying plantain, cooking fried rice, frying pork pork, baking cake, everything else. Is there any Angela here? Angela, Angela. Angela. <laughs> In fact, there's one guy I'm seeing here, I'm suspecting you have been breaking your fast because of aroma. The guy is around here. I'm even, the person that I'm suspecting is even smiling. <laughs> and looking at me. Hello, eh? hello, Harry, Harry. Is any Harry here? Now, joke, I'm not prophesying. <laughs> but it? Even the man of God that came exposed him. Exposed him. Hello. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So, it's so important to understand that you cannot get to your dream goal by letting anything go. You're going to have to come to the point where you know the four of your own life. When David showed up from the backside of the bush and was ready to take on Goliath, they asked him, they said he was a busybody. Why? It was his brothers who were in the army. He wasn't. No, but David said something that God backed him up for. He said, is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? There's a reason for God's sake. That guy cannot stand there and desecrate the armies of our God. There's a reason I came out of the bush. If you don't have a stronger purpose pursuing you, anything will go in life. People will derail you. People will tell you to do stuff you shouldn't do. You take decisions that are fleshy. We're not meant to live emotionally. We're meant to live decisionally. 
in essence, we are going to go against our emotion a lot of times. A lot of times. We go against emotion. Oh, praise God. Let me use the example of the work I'm currently doing. We have a time target. I'm not staying awake how many days because I want to. But there's a target. If I don't finish before a certain deadline, all our effort is wasted. So we are pursuing a target. That's what the Bible says. He that runs must compete lawfully. Otherwise, he won't get the prize. Let me give you some practical examples so that it doesn't look like I'm just talking over your head. Fidelity is a prize of discipline. Discipline is a prize of consistent denial. Did you get the chain? Fidelity, faithfulness, sexuality is a product of discipline. Discipline is a protect, product of continual denial. Your flesh is going to call for things you should never do. But you can never attain discipline until you perfect denial. I want it, but I won't take it. Do you know what I'm saying? There's a four. Why? And guess what? The greatest four for a child of God to get marriage right is not even you to enjoy. It's God to be glorified. That's the greatest four. Malachi 2. I brought them together. Why did I bring them together? Because I desire godly seed. It's all about him. You know, sometimes we can sing songs that we don't mean because we don't leave it out. It's all about you, Jesus. Only you. Or, you know, we like this in a lot, right? Yeah. I'll bring you more than a song. To I brought myself, but don't touch my boyfriend. I am your But leave my girlfriend. I am your man. Leave me at the altar, my father. When I have this time. Leave me at the altar, my father. With his spare time. And I'll be checking clock. We'll go for a retreat. They'll say we are praying for one hour. I'll use style and be roaming about until seven minutes to the end of the prayer. I just don't make a shake, a shake, 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 For why? Anything you are forced to do, you have not seen the reason for doing it. I will come and force you to read book. You are never open. Do you know some problems you entered in life? If you saw. The knowledge that will take you out of that problem, never to enter, you are taking it with your two hands. But you know why they are forcing knowledge on us? We have not seen the consequence of ignorance. Ah! Me like this, for instance. When I see, you know, when you come out of failure, you appreciate success. I can't suffer twice in life. Come out of the broken home and have a broken marriage. Who is worrying you? There's a fall. There's a reason. There's something that gingered you to say, you know what? I can't repeat this thing twice in one lifetime. I can't survive hell and hell. Nah, there's a four. All right? Time is really fast spent. Let's wrap this up. Number five. What word is that? Number five is word. Somebody say marriage. Somebody say marriage. Who knows what marriage is? What is marriage? Get me a mic. What is marriage? Get a mic, get a mic. I need volunteers. Three volunteers. What is marriage? Leave me at the altar with my husband. Leave me at the altar with my wife. This ring I brought for you, I am your husband. It's you. Hey, God bless you. Okay, thank you. All right. 
What is marriage? What is marriage between what is the mic enter your hand is not working? Praise God. Hallelujah. Our marriage and have a different meaning. But for a Christian. I think marriage is a coming together. Hey, we're not we're not bothered with a different meaning. We are two, two people are coming together to fulfill God's purpose. So that's what I say marriage to be. Two people coming together to fulfill God's purpose. Thank you. Next. It's you. It's true. Give her red scarf, glasses, black dress, put your hand in her mouth and do no, no, no. Give her the microphone. What is marriage? Ah. Collect, tell us inside the mic. Tell us inside the mic. Ah, auntie. Oh, clap for her, clap, encourage her in the Lord. And she will now march down the aisle to Mario. She will even be dancing. It's your wedding. It's your wedding. Bala, 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 la, la. Use the microphone. Because on the wedding day, they'll say, use the microphone, say, I take thee for listo and my lovely wedding husband. To have and to hold for better for worse. Come on, come on. Union. I didn't hear you. Okay, let me be your let me be your um, interpreter. I can't hear you. I can't tell the people what. Marriage is a union. She say marriage na uh-huh. union. Trade union <laughs> is a union. All right, here's the deal. Two of you are right, of course. All, all of us will be right. Thank you. I just wanted to hear your voices. When you come to the marriage part, the truth is we live in a generation that are getting wedded without knowing marriage. Write this down if you're writing. Let me help you. Marriage is an oath of total obedience. Marriage is an oath of total obedience. It's a covenant caught under God. Now get, watch this. Marriage is a burial ceremony. Marriage is a burial ceremony. So people just say, What? Marriage is the burial ceremony where you vow to die and remain dead to self. That's why every marriage problem is rooted in selfishness. The day you choose to marry, you have lost the right to have a will if you do it right. The only will that matters will be the will of the God who set up the institution and you accepted to enter. So there's a lot of problem because people enter for themselves. Actually, you wonder what he said to me. I, 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 I. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. You know. I. <laughs> I. <laughs> I. 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 Me, 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 
They just enter marriage. Then she's just coming home. She's just thinking he'll come and meet her by the gate and just carry her. Belling, 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 belling. Carry her on the head. Wife has come home. Then carry her to bathroom. Just drop her gently. Pull her clothes. Carry sponge. How was your day? Then put the shower. Just be showering her. Then when you finish, just carry her. Put her on the bed. Breakfast in bed. Never say anything. <laughs> Marriage is point of service. Point of service. When was the last time you did anything for the Holy Spirit? You know when a woman just enters marriage with demand, demand, and they laugh. There are only two of you called helper in the Bible. You and the Holy Spirit. You see the way they walk. He walks, walks, walks. And you know a man likes his position of leadership. And die you day, die. Men ought to love their wives. Husbands ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church. How? Why she was yet a sinner, died for her. In essence, she doesn't qualify for his love by merit. It's his choice. Eh? My wife didn't greet me. And so she didn't go. So did not. <laughs> you better know what you want to enter when you say you want to enter marriage. This analysis we are doing is why people enter marriages that are not on purpose. Finish. You entered for you. Let me tell you, the biggest thing that will keep a marriage is their central purpose in God. Finish. If both of them are in active pursuit of obedience, they are safe. Why? Every time there's a conflict or clash of interest, it's because we showed up and kept God down. There's no confusion in God. Both of us are submitted to his divine will. You find perfect unity. You find the husband saying something, and the wife will say, Wow, like you were my thought. No, I wasn't in your thought, you were in his thought. For my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So every time your thought shows up against his thought, you create conflict. What does God think about me, for instance? Oh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Dwell with your wife with understanding. Oh, when you travel to verse 8, he said we should be compassionate. Have compassion one to another. When you travel to verse 10, that we do not return evil for evil or railing for railing, but a blessing for thereunto are ye called. Come on. When I begin to think his thoughts, then I begin to have peaceful ways. That's why I say when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies at peace with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you must sit down and understand the nature of marriage. It's not something you enter because you're 36. It's not something you enter because your mom wants to carry grandchild. She should go and focus on her husband. You have left them at home. They don't know what to do with each other. They're looking for Mugo. Mommy, go, 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 go home. Go home, go home. Come here and come and... Uh, you didn't burn me so that I can be burning for you. What's the next word? 
What's the next word? What's the next word? What's the next word? Fulfill. I'll just combine that with purpose for time's sake so we can wrap up and take questions. Fulfill is to finish a thing. God had something in mind when he set marriage together. What God had in mind was not a couple who just met to quarrel, fight, and divorce. That's not fulfilling something. If you want to understand what God wants you to do with marriage, combining the last two words, fulfill and purpose, if you go back to Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, but God said to Adam, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make for him a helper, one comparable to him who can help him. Two things happen there. It's not good for him to be alone. I'm not going to render him alone. I'm not going to keep him stranded. I'm not going to keep him in a place where he doesn't have companionship. I'm going to bring him a companion. Yes, I know I want him to fulfill my purpose, but I'm not going to keep him stranded. So the donkey who rode triumphantly into Jerusalem wasn't Jesus, but enjoyed all of the palm and the clothing and all that was placed on the floor. Why? He was riding Jesus. So he said, you know what? I'm going to bring this person into your life to bring you joy. So the first thing you would notice when we do it right, and according to God's order, understanding what I've been teaching, is that you find joy. See, Adam, there's not a lot of joy being alone right now. The hour has come. You're going to find joy. That's I don't like the teachers who teach that marriage will not make you happy. It will make you happy if you do it right. So don't tell me that. Yeah, I also teach that it's work. The fact that it's work does not mean to not make you happy. For instance, when I work, I expect to be paid. So it's not pure suffering. It's suffering for a reward, right? Hello? A good marriage will make you happy. It's not a, a walk in hell. Mm. Right? So, when you say fulfill purpose, is that you are able to deliver on the mandate God placed on marriage. There's a mandate on marriage. He it says, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make for him a helper. So, I'm getting two things in one. A companion to be with me. And a helper who understands, discerns, and supports our course in life. Praise God. Let's take questions. Praise the Lord. Please, I just want to make a request. I don't know whether it's a request or a question. I'm using the request about that, that, that one, that, that point, how. Please, I want you to, to emphasize on that point you said. Prepare for marriage even when you are, even when you have, even when you don't have someone. Whether you can emphasize more on that. Okay. Yeah, I said the moment you can conceive the idea of wanting marriage, begin to prepare. What do I mean? People wait until they start dating somebody to read any book on marriage. Wrong. For instance, I didn't even talk about my book, if you notice. I have a free book on Okada Books, Will You Marry Me? I believe every single, if I made it free on Okada Books so that nobody will have an excuse. It's not about money. I sell books too, yeah? Will you marry me? For instance, one of the questions I get all the time is the question, how do you know God's will for marriage? That doesn't require a relationship before you want to know. Because you want to know so that you know how to enter a relationship. 500 naira. It's online. Knowing God's will. What do I explain in that book? Dreams, vision, trances, prophet, pastor, parents, all the voices. What does God's word say about how you can know his will? Well analyzed. So why should I be waiting? You know, and I said, you are more likely to have more time at the single phase of your life. So why don't you invest it knowing forward? Yes, when you hit the practical, you will learn another set of lessons. But let me tell you, the difference between one single and another when it comes to the subject of marriage and destiny is the exposure they have received. When I was getting married, or even right now, I know people 
people don't know what I know, I'm not trying to boast. I'm telling you, if you don't put it, you don't enter. If you have not gone to university five years like I did to study law, you don't go to law school. It's not pride. I'm not your mate when it comes to law. In fact, we say you are not learned. You don't know anything. Why? Something entered. Do you know what I mean? So, once you can conceive the idea, begin the preparation. Hallelujah. Uh, talking of uh, purpose, now you say any specific uh, purpose that one should feel in marriage, is it specified, or it should be possibly based on the career or opportunity uh, the man is having. And if it be that way, the man might have something he tends to do. And the wife also having something to do with it. How should they relate with that? The next one. Let's no. start with that. God is not the author of confusion. If both, like I said, it's an oath of death. If both of them are submitted and obedient to God, He can't bring them together to create conflict. Never. Their purposes will be complementary. All right? Go on. So the next one. So how do you know God's will uh, for marriage? Was it coming in specific? Did I not tell you before He asked the question? Was it coming as a uh, very significant uh, sign? But we have stories or possibly testimonies of people who give like this what I've seen and some it doesn't come that way. People can be examples, people are not the standard. Thank you, sir. So okay. I have uh, a question here, yes, sir. Is it advisable to marry a single mother? And as you being a single person? Well, for every single mother you see, clap for them. Because for every single mother, plenty girls did abortion that you did not see. So if she's a child of God, why are you judging a mistake that she made honestly or repented from? How do we judge the ones that wash their own? Her salvation is the key word. Some of you are still trying to recover. Uh, when you meet teachers that are teaching JJ, when it comes to discipline, you apply this. Hmm? So come back here. Some of you are still like, what happened? What happened? What happened? God bless you. Oh, okay. Okay. What are the red signals in a relationship, sir? Red signal. Red signal number one is this is what the word of God calls red signal. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, for instance, do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You are an unbeliever, red. Red, red, red. All right? Number two, everything that damages the capacity to share a future. You know, for instance, when you see certain character traits, somebody hits you, somebody abuses you. Marriage is a journey of purpose absolute journey of purpose I must see purpose in the line of it I'll give you an example you come into the life of a man you are not seeing any class of leadership not one degree of leadership what's leadership? you are dating a man he says he's born again, he's on fire for Jesus one suggestion has not come from him of how you took the Bible which book you should read which day you should set aside to pray? You say you are dating a man. No, you are dating a child. Hello? I must see leadership because one of the things in the offices I want to give you in my life is leadership. Spiritual leadership, financial leadership. You are dating a man. He's blaming all his uncles for why he is broke. He's not old enough. He's not. I tell people, I was born to a broke family, intensively broke. I saw poverty firsthand. My own father, by dint of hard work, putting his hand to work, today I can quote him as a multi-millionaire, no doubt. One of the things I picked from the same man, and that's how I live my life, is I have zero sense of entitlement for my father. I believe I should get on the street and pick up a life. So you meet a man. When I meet people who complain about uncles, I tell them I turned on a father. I'm dealing with quarrel. Beautiful relationship. 
I face my front to mind my business and be a man. My uncle didn't help me. My auntie didn't help me. My auntie didn't help me. It's a red flag blaming everybody but themselves. I can go on and on. So you want to see where are the qualities of the office you want to occupy in my life. You want to be a wife. <laughs> what pressure can you withstand? I tell them, especially in Abuja, where a greater percentage of the ladies live in Abuja cannot defend what they spend as money. They want somebody else to fund it. They go and walk. Dignity of labor. Pick up something and do. Men, I know your source. God is. It's getting tough here. Oh. Are you sure you want me to continue? Ah! I don't have to lie, you. Oh. The next question, sir. When you are above 30 years and you don't have any man, what should you do? And we are praying. Ask God, how did we get here? And we are praying about it every day. Uh -uh. The problem with Christians, when they say they are praying about it, they are announcing religion, not obedience. Is God so deaf that he has not told you anything? The beauty of prayer is instruction. It's not a golden calf that you come and talk to. Choco, 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 choco. God, 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 God. 30, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40, 40. You will finish talking and walk away. I say it's getting tough here. Yeah. Number one, when I get questions, and I get a lot of questions that has to do with age, this person is dealing with having their eyes on the problem and not on God. Every time I get questions as to age, in fact, this one is mild, I get questions that accuse God, but only I've been faithful. I also get threats. I will dump this Christianity thing, you know. ah. This is well, though. Where do I start from? Just like that, prophet told Anna, I'm not God. I don't keep children. I don't give children. Do you get what I mean? So it's so important to understand. Now, guess what? Emma, please get it for me. Do you have registration for this company? Do you have the first people that arrived? Go to the booth, yeah? There's the marital release prayer, the booklet. Bring 20 copies. The first 20 singles on the list. That book is just a booklet, 500, but I'm not selling it. The first 20 persons on the list. It's a 15 day prayer course. I actually did that book because I realized counseling people, especially in this city, people didn't know how to pray about their marital destiny. In fact, when I got the instruction to do that book, <laughs> somebody told me a pathetic story of a prophet in this town who was doing strange things in the name of releasing people by that. I, I, I told her, you know what he was doing? You will buy material, so for you and him, he's married. He will conduct a mock wedding ceremony in his church that he has released with you. Take both with you. You will bake cake, feed people. His business was booming, so they, he would even do like four weddings at once, the way churches do mass weddings. Foolish girls in this town, you will go and cut material, sew with a married man in the name of prophet. Do cake. So his house is always having cake. Cook rice. Invite people. He said you must make it look like a proper wedding to release your marital destiny from which scripture? Bible chapter what verse what? That's why if you have the time and data, the person asking this question, go to my YouTube channel, Relationship and Marriage. Find the playlist, Getting Married Made Easy. I taught a four-part teaching, Getting Married Made Easy, part one, part two, part three, part four. You need to listen to teachings that educate you on how to carry depression, desperation, and fear. Fold it like this, fling it, and determine your destiny. I give you one scripture. Proverbs, sorry, Philippians chapter four, verse six. He said, the peace of God, the passes all understanding, will guard your heart. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Because of our time, I just watch. There, there is another question here. Number one, there are two. Is it under a must to be married? Number two. No. I wish the scripture projection. I give you a reference. 
Matthew 19, 8 to 11. It's not a must. If you read it particularly in the message translation, you get what Jesus was saying, black and white. Not by force. But there are ways not to. Number two, is it wrong to marry a lady older than you, three years older? I don't know the doctrine of your church on that matter, so I'm not asking. I have answer for this. I don't know. Some questions are in such a way that I will allow you to ask your pastor. So that I don't leave you with a position that is not the position of your local assembly. I'm a minister. Hmm? So that I can leave the gates in peace. But you could say, Pastor, that thing you say, that man came and said, eh, eh, it's not me and you. I'm not asking your pastor. Next. Uh, give him, give him, give him. Fulfill my promise in public so that I don't say I, I, I go with them. If you collect this book, spend 15 days. Again, it's not a ritual, it's just a guide. Spend 15 days, it's 15 days of a prayer guide. Hmm? First 20 that register that are single. Okay, thank you, sir. Please, can we appreciate him by clapping our hands? Okay, there are three questions here. Number one says, under the how of your teaching, please explain the act and art of marriage. The act is the one you see in church. They will come out, come and marry. The act, A-R-T, is the one that either buys ice cream or slaps wine. Choose one. Act. For instance, I'll tell you very straight up. I have a simple formula for being a good husband. Focus on making your wife happy. As far as it does, it doesn't offend God. Like you see me, I have no use for money. There are only two uses I have for money. Or three, let me break it down. My wife, God, my wife, my children. Me, I can live with 1K balance as far as those three are settled. I'm okay. We travel. I buy things for your wife and child. My wife say, maybe you are forgetting yourself. Now you are forgetting yourself in happiness. Yeah. My focus, the peace, the way to find peace in life, give her peace. That's an art. It's a decision I have made. You can't tamper with it. My wife doesn't know how to do data. I do, whether I'm abroad or at home, I'm the one that monitors whether her data has finished. I give you another art, A-R-T. For every money I make, my wife has a fixed percentage I send to her. Me. <laughs> fixed. It's not, it's not, the way you pay tight, I have a percentage. She, I have told her. So she spent time praying for me to make money because she get caught. Do you understand? Art, A-R-T. How are you doing the thing to get the results you want? Art, A-R-T. Number two, you said marriage is a product of service. Please expand you. I just gave you an example. I'm servicing her account. Number three, what is our central purpose in God? What's our central purpose? Right now, reconciling men to God. Finish. Thank you, sir. The last question is not very clear. I will try. Sir, please, my friend has a guy she loves. Ah, you don't have problems. Your friend has problems. Ah, ah. <laughs> For the sake of reading, let me just read. And the guy loves her too, but she said she does not want to go into a relationship now. And the guy wants a relationship. And she cannot be the, like, the guy. Yes, and she cannot be the guy. Please, what can she do? This is called situationship. And the situationship is coming out of being emotional, not decisional. We don't have to call date to emotion. My wife is not the most beautiful woman I've seen in life. She's the most beautiful woman I have chosen. So when people tell you all this lie, since I married you, I've not seen anybody like you. Pa, 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 pa. So as married as I am now, if one girl starts sending me a message, I can't sleep without you. I can't do without you. I'm not for counseling. Man of God, if you see the message she's sending to me, oh my God. Some things will come at you in life. Decisionally, you 
you will bury it. You will ring bell. No, school don't close. This is situationship. Why? Situationship is when you find yourself in a place where the future cannot be delivered, but you are claiming you are stuck. You have not started using your brain. Can you stand up now and go to gutter and say, I don't like gutter water? Will you? You will not. Because it does not deliver a healthy result. I hope with these few points of mine, God bless you. If you are clapping those hands, you can do better.